learned in the last lesson that we can protect a range of data, but that these safeguards won't work properly until we've completed the protection process. Before we do that, we need to decide which cells others should be able to edit without a password. I want to allow editing to the March numbers. I'll select cells D4 through D15. On the Home tab in the Font group, I'll open the Font dialog box launcher. I'll open the Protection tab. Notice here that the locked box is selected. Cells by default are locked. That might sound strange since we're able to edit them freely. Notice the note below. Locked cells have no effect until the worksheet has been protected. If we protect the sheet right now, then all of the cells would be locked. Since I don't want the March numbers to be locked, and I have them selected, I am going to clear this box and click OK. Now we are ready to protect this sheet. To do that, I will open the Review tab and click on Protect Sheet. I'll enter the password. Down below, we have some tasks that we can allow the user to perform, even when the cells are locked. I'm going to accept the default and click OK. I'll re-enter the password and click OK. Let's test it out. I will try to add some data for May. I'm asked for a password. Good. I'll try to change data in January. It's protected. That's what we want. Lastly, I will try to change data in March. I'm able to change cell amounts for March because we unlock those cells. Perfect. To stop protecting a worksheet, all you need to do is click Unprotect Sheet here on the ribbon. Enter the password and click OK. To remove the protection on a cell range, I'll click on Allow Edit Ranges, select the range being protected, and click Delete. Then I'll click OK. If there are any cells you want available for editing, remember to unlock those cells before turning on worksheet protection.